Evelyn Grace Hartley was born on November 21st, 1937, in La Crosse County. She was described as being kind and well behaved. She had blue eyes, brown hair, and wore glasses that she was not wearing at the time of her disappearance. Evelyn also enjoyed being at her local church, where she played the piano and sang in the choir. Evelyn was a straight A student. She was said to be very hardworking, and that definitely reflected in her grades. Unfortunately, not much else is known about Evelyn before her disappearance. So, we will now delve into what happened on the night of October 24th, 1953. On the night of her disappearance, Evelyn had agreed to babysit a 20-month-old girl at the home of La Crosse State College professor, Vigo Rasmussen. He and his wife, as well as many other residents of the town, were attending the homecoming game at the local high school. The family's regular babysitter was unavailable, which was the case with most of the town's residents. So, Evelyn was hired as a replacement. Evelyn had brought a few school books with her to the home, as she planned to study during the night as the baby slept. Evelyn's parents had also agreed with the arrangement, and expressed that Evelyn would need to call the parents at 8.30pm no later, no earlier, to check in and make sure that both Evelyn and the baby were okay. Keep in mind that Evelyn was 15 years old during this time, so it was not unusual for the parents to have been a little anxious about what was taking place. When the clock struck 8.30, no phone call was ever made to Evelyn's parents. This obviously began to concern them, and they continued to make frantic phone calls to the house she had been residing in. However, nobody would answer the calls, and it turns out that nobody would ever hear from Evelyn ever again. The parents were very distressed at the situation, knowing that it would be very unusual for their daughter to not pick up the phone and ignore them. So, the father rushed over to the Rasmussen home, hoping to find an explanation as to what was going on, such as Evelyn being fast asleep on the couch. However, the confusion lingering in the mind of her father began to increase when he saw that the living room had been left in an utter mess. Furniture had been moved around and Evelyn's books had been thrown around the room with her shoes and glasses laying on the ground. What made the situation even weirder was the fact that all of the doors to the house were locked with the lights and radio being left on inside. Although Evelyn seemed to have vanished, the 20-month-old baby was found untouched sleeping in her crib. Evelyn's father began to circle the house, looking for a way in. When he found that the only window that had been left open was leading to the basement, it was very clear that someone had tried to break into the home. Upon further inspection, the windows were found to have pry marks. The basement window screen had been pushed in and a small ladder stood below it. There were prints from sneakers found in the basement, and worse, there was blood smeared near the basement window. Blood that matched Evelyn's type. Investigators believed Evelyn had been taken through that window and dragged through the yard. There were two pools of blood, which were also Evelyn's type, found on the lawn, with a bloody handprint on a neighbor's house. Tracker dogs traced Evelyn's scent for two blocks, then losing the trail at Cooley Drive, northeast of the Rasmussen home. Authorities believe whoever took her put her in a car. Then, one neighbour reported seeing a lightly coloured car circling the neighbourhood at approximately 8pm. Another local resident said they heard screams at about 7pm, but they assumed it was children playing. Authorities believe Evelyn was abducted around that time, between 7 and 8 p.m. Two days after her disappearance, a local man named Ed Hoffer came forward to say that at about 7.15 p.m. that night, he almost hit a two-tone green 1941 or 1942 vehicle, which was speeding westward. He noticed two men and a girl inside, one man was driving and the other was in the back seat with the girl. 
who was slumped forwards with her head leaning against the front seat. Hoffa said he'd seen the car's occupants a few minutes earlier, staggering down the street near where the blood was later found. Hoffa had assumed the three people were en route to the homecoming game, as he was. He did not realise the significance of what he saw, because at that time, no one knew Evelyn was missing at all. Hoffa's information was publicised, but his name was withheld from the media for nearly 50 years after the disappearance. Shortly after Evelyn's suspected kidnapping, bloody pieces of clothing began to appear outside of La Crosse. Firstly, a pair of underwear and a bra were found near a highway 14 underpass that had been soaked in blood. Then, a pair of good rich tennis shoes were found southeast of La Crosse near Coon Valley. The shoes did not show any signs of blood spatter, but the thread pattern on the soles did match prints found at the Rasmussen home. Also, the pattern of wear on the soles led investigators to believe that the primary wearer of the shoes often rode a motorcycle known as a whizzer. In close proximity to where the shoes were found, a jacket was discovered. Blood had covered the jacket on both arms and on its back. The blood found on the jacket matched Evelyn's blood type and it was discovered that the texture of the jacket matched the smears that had been found near the window of the basement in the Rasmussen home. The kidnapping led to one of the largest searches in the history of Wisconsin, with mass searches of vehicles in the area taking place, as well as lie detector tests being used and given to all students and teachers at Evelyn School. Many suspects were questioned over the years, but not enough evidence was found to implicate anyone.